The Bible says in Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 5, He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds... We are healed. I'd like to take a few moments to share with you the significance of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now, perhaps you may be asking, what are these spiritual blessings that we've been given in Christ? Well, if we move on to verse 4, we'll find that we're blessed because God has chosen us. The Bible reads, Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Notice something here, saints. It's through Jesus Christ that we are chosen by God. It's in Jesus Christ that we are chosen by God. And it's because of Jesus Christ that we are chosen by God. By God. Moving on to Ephesians 1 verse 5, we're blessed because God has adopted us. The Bible reads, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Though mankind disobeyed God in the very beginning with Adam and Eve and introduced sin into the world. When our Lord Jesus Christ hung on the cross, when he who was without sin was crucified, he took our place as sinners. He literally carried the weight of the world, the sins of every person who would ever live. Jesus Christ paid the price for it all and satisfied God's wrath. And so, when Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, says, no one can come to the Father except through me, he is telling us that he covered our sins. He covered our shame, and through the shedding of His blood, through His sacrifice, we are adopted as children of God when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Ephesians 1, verses 6 and 7 say, To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved, in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. Once again, the Bible says in Him, in Christ, we have been redeemed. That means that the penalty for our sin was settled on the cross. And my final scripture is Ephesians 1 verse 13. It reads, In Him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Dear friends, from these few verses I've read, do you see what God has done for us? He has blessed us. He has chosen us. He has adopted us as his children. He has accepted us and redeemed us. And if that wasn't enough, God has gone a step further and sealed us with the Holy Spirit. How rich we are in the Lord. And so with all that we've learned from Ephesians 1 in mind, let's express our gratitude to God for His loving kindness towards us. Dear Heavenly Father, words fail to express just how grateful we are for Your goodness, for Your love, and Your mercy. Master, Your Word tells us that You've chosen us, you have called us to come out from the world and be separate. You have called us to live lives that honor you, lives that serve you and please you. So, Father, our prayer today is that you would help us. Give us the grace and the strength 
so that we would not be conformed to this world, so that we would not be attached to the superficial values and the customs of this world. But help us, Lord, to be transformed. Help us to be changed and renewed in our minds. God, we thank you for making us your own. We hold on to your word in 1 Peter 2, verse 9, where it says, But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Thank you, God, for being a father to the fatherless. Thank you for being our load-bearer. God, if it had not been for you, where would we be? We praise you, God, because even in your majesty and your righteousness, you still care for us. You still forgive us time after time, even though we fall time and time again. God, we thank you for such mercy. And Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would put the understanding in our hearts that we can never be victorious in this life if we are not in Christ. Matthew 6 verse 24 says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, money, possessions, fame, status, or whatever is valued more than the Lord. Lord, right now we declare that you alone are our one and only master. You are our leader. Indeed, no one can serve two masters at once. Light and darkness do not mix. And so, Father, we choose to stand and follow the light of Christ. We commit to you, Lord Jesus, and our honest request is that the Holy Spirit would work within our hearts that he would work within our minds so that we will have the kind of commitment that says, not my will, Lord, but your will is all important. Truly, Father, it's not about my wants. It's not about my feelings, but it's all about you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, give us the kind of heart that's so committed to the Lord that it's willing to crucify the flesh with its passions and desires. Help us to carry our cross, Lord Jesus. Your word in Matthew 5, verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. In you, Father, I will be satisfied. In you, King Jesus, I will be nourished by your goodness. I glorify your name, Lord Jesus. Be blessed be glorified. Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and we give you thanks. Amen and amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Notice something here, saints. It's through Jesus Christ that we are chosen by God. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, 
you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, money, possessions, fame, status, or whatever is valued more than the Lord. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 5, He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds... We are healed.